I'm Wesley T. Leonard, Senior Minister for the Southside Church of Christ here in the city beautiful of Orlando, Florida. It is my joy, my privilege, and my pleasure to be invited to be a participant in this week-long activity of encouraging the God people there in the Cleveland, Ohio at the Church of Christ at 131 Street. My good friend, Brother Ernest Bates, has invited me, encouraged me, employed me to uh, make a deposit into this festivity. And I can't tell you how happy I am to do so. As you still uh, chilling on Lake Erie there in Ohio, we in Florida, uh, warm, sunny, and tropical. And I hope you feel the love and the warmth coming from Florida to those of you in Ohio on Lake Erie. Uh, beloved, we remind our church here in Orlando that when you walk with God, no breath is lost. When you talk with God, no strength is lost. When you wait for God, no time is lost. And when you trust in God, your soul will never, ever be lost. Tonight or today, I am honored and privileged to deal with this theme of asking a rhetorical question, is Christ the author and finisher of your faith? For that to come to fruition, beloved, I want to challenge you, encourage you, if you would be so beneficently kind, to meet me or beat me to the New Testament book of Hebrews, chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12, and our rendezvous point would be verse number one. Hebrews 12, verse number one. Therefore, we also have been surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. Let us then therefore lay aside every weight and sin that do it so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Here's the verse of him first. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, was set down in the right hand of the throne of God. Christ, the author and finisher of our faith. Beloved, the writer of this book of Hebrews officially falls into the category of anonymous. For there is no conclusive proof of this book authorship. Most theologians and scholars believe that this book has the tenor, the tone, and the texture of other Pauline epistles. In other words, most believe it is from the ten of the great apostolos of old, the Apostle Paul. And on that, I happen to concur. The theme of this epistle, the theme of this parchment, this letter, is Christ is superior. Christ is greater. Christ is better than. I believe this is one of the greatest valedictories of the New Testament because the theme again accents that Christ is superior. Christ is greater. Or Christ is better than. Oh yeah, the Hebrew writer then began to compare Jesus to several entities well known to man. He then in chapter one compared Jesus to the angels. And he said for a little while he was made lower than the angels. 
But when compared to angels, Jesus is better than the angels. He's better than Gabriel. He's better than Michael. He's better than Raphael and Sinclair. And Lord knows he's better than Satan or Lucifer. And then, then he was compared to Moses, that great emancipator and liberator of Israel. The Bible declared that Moses was a servant in the house, but Jesus was Lord over the house. That's why when compared to Moses, Jesus was better. He then was compared to Aaron and the Aaronic priesthood and all the concepts, precepts, the edicts of the law. And when compared to the law and the priesthood, Jesus was better. Then, then the Hebrew writer compared Jesus to that mysterious priest from Salem by the name of Melchizedek. And like Jesus, Melchizedek had no earthly beginning and no trace of our discernible end. He was compared to Melchizedek, but then when compared to him, even him, Jesus is better. I'm trying to tell you today, it does not matter who or what you compare Jesus to. He's better. He's better than Buddha. He's better than Muhammad. He's better than Plato, Aristotle, Socrates, Euripides, Aristophanes. It does not matter. Jesus is better. No matter, uh, no poet, no matter how li uh, lyrical his pentometer. No soldiers, no matter how victorious their campaign. No diplomat, no matter how astute his diplomacy. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. So now let's put this book of Hebrews under the crucible of investigation and find out tonight you see the author and the finisher of our faith. I had a lady many years ago in New Haven, Connecticut, come up to me and say, Brother Lennon, uh, why is there a Hebrews in the Bible and not a Shebrews in the Bible? And I hasten to tell her, Hebrews covers the he's and the she's. <laughs> I want to investigate just very briefly. I don't want to be long, but I do want to be strong. Uh, there's a premise, there's a concept that we need to wrap our minds our souls and our spirit around. That is, I can say without hesitation or reservation that Jesus Christ is the author and the finisher of our faith. He's not the author and finisher of your money. He's not the author and finisher of your education. He's not the author and finisher of your employment. He's not even the author and finisher of your earthly relationship. What he's the author and finisher of is our faith. That just means when you are the author and the finisher, and the Bible says it uniquely in many other places, in many other ways, that means everything starts and stops with Jesus. That's why the Bible declares he's Alpha and Omega. He's the first and the last. He's the beginning and the end. He's our A through our Z. He's our Genesis through our revelation. And he's the author and the finisher of our faith. Oh, in your leisure, please read the previous chapter, chapter 11 of Hebrews. It is commonly referred to as the hall of faith. When again and again the Hebrew writer uh, named and recognized Old Testament patriarchs who found the place in the hall of faith. As a matter of fact, chapter 11 opens by stating it is the hall of faith. The Hebrews 11 and 1 gives us a biblical definition of faith. Hebrews 11 and 1, you remember, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, but the evidence of things not seen. Hebrews 11 and 6, without faith, it's impossible to please God. But he didn't come and think God must believe first that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So the Hebrew writer, writer reminds us, by definition, faith is the substance of 
things we hope for, but it's the evidence of things you can't see. In other words, beloved, he's the author and the finisher of our faith. He's the author and finisher of things we cannot see. If you can see it, it ain't faith. If you can realize it, it ain't faith. Okay, you're not seeing what I'm saying. If you have to believe and see and trust something and somebody that you can't see. You have to trust God when you can't trace God. You're still in heaven. If you don't see it before you see it, you'll never see it. Preach, Brother Larry. If you don't see where you're going before you get where you're going, when you get where you're going, you won't know where you are. That's faith. <laughs> Let me back that thing up and tell you again. If you don't see where you're going before you get where you're going, when you get where you're going, you won't know where you are. Okay? Still in it. If what you see is all you see, all right. then you don't see what God wants you to see. Preach, brother, then. Still ain't got it. Faith does not change what you see. Faith changes how you process what you see. All right. Amen, somebody. Amen. Still ain't got it. Faith is not jumping to conclusions. Faith is coming to the conclusion to jump. <laughs> okay, let me learn now this faith. I'm trying to get you to see he's the author and finish about faith. The Hebrew writer reminds us that faith is the substance of things hoped for, but the evidence of things not yet seen. Let me learn it for you. Let, let me put it in a way you might get it. So here's what faith is. Faith is believing something is so even when it does not appear to be so, in order that it might become so, simply because God said so. Right. Preach with it, then. I'm going to help you again. <laughs> Faith is believing that something is so, uh -huh. even when it does not appear to be so, in order that it might become so, simply because God said so. But look, that's faith. Oh yeah, you need intelligence, you need education, you need friends, uh, you need a job, you need somewhere to live, you need something to drive, but of all the things we need and desire as Christians is faith. Yeah, don't you trust your heart, don't you trust your mind, don't trust your cerebellum, your cerebral cortex, your thalamus, your hypothalamus, uh, don't trust your pineal gland. Don't you trust your medulla abdulgata? Trust God and watch what God does in your behalf. When he's the author and the finisher of your faith, it can make a big difference in your life. You see, beloved, if in your living, if you keep the faith, one day your faith will keep you. If you carry your Bible, one day your Bible will will carry you. Is he the author and the finisher of your faith? Is he, is he the back and the front of your faith? Is he the top and the bottom of your faith? Once he is the author and the finisher of your faith, that means we are inculcated and encompassed by God from start to finish. That means you got God behind you you got Jesus ahead of you. You got the Holy Spirit in you. You got the devil beneath you. You got angels above you. You got grace on one side and mercy on the other when Jesus is the author and the finisher of your faith. But love, uh, it's not worth it. In all my studies, God has never been impressed by any title we have, any possession we have, you know, the only time in the Bible God was impressed by a man or woman is when God says, Great is thy faithfulness. Yeah. Whether it was a sightful Phoenician woman who begged him for bread and crumbs from the table, whether it was a woman with issue of blood who fought through the crowd and broke Levitical law to touch the hem of his God. He always said, 
It is your faith that made you whole. Whether it was a poor man who cut a hole in the roof and lowered the bed down so that their friend could be healed by Jesus, he would declare, Great is thou faithless. Or he would declare, It is your faith that has made you whole. You see, beloved, what we have to understand when he's the author and the finisher, the beginning and the end, the alpha and the omega of our faith, that he's got us back, front, bottom, and top. I heard a story about two girls, and they were exhibiting faith and didn't even know it. Uh, Mary and Jenny were counting pennies. Mary and Jenny were counting pennies, and they said they counted their money. So Mary said, I got one, two, three, four, five pennies. How many you got, Jenny? Jenny put her pennies down, and she says, I got one, two, three, four, five. She counted five, and he said, so I got ten pennies. And Mary said, no, 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 no. Count them again. Jenny said, I got one, two, three, four, five. So I got ten pennies. Mary said, no, I got five. One, two, three, four, five. You counted yours. You got five. Jenny said, no, I got ten pennies. She said, how can you have ten when we counted five? Oh, she said, oh, I'm counting the five I have, and I'm also counting the five my daddy said he's going to give me when he get home. Her faith led her to already be counting yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. what she had before she had it. That's called faith. That's what the church needs. That's what young people need. That's what old people need. Young people, see your future. See your destiny. See your greatness before it happens. There's a king, listen to me, there's a king in every kid. There's a queen in every kid. There's a king in every boy, and there's a queen in every girl. And yet, there's a kid in every king, and there's a king in every kid. I can't to tell you, you got to see yourself being great. You got to see yourself being worthy. You got to see yourself being accomplished. You got to see yourself being godly. You got to see yourself being scholastic and academic, even before it comes to pass. You see, beloved, I want to tell you, and hear me well, old people and young people, we older people got to stop killing the young people before they have a chance to realize what you can see. That's faith. I always liken it to a caterpillar. Since you and I don't like slimy, crawling worms, many of you step on a caterpillar and kill it while it's in a worm stage. What you didn't realize, if you would have left that caterpillar alone in time, it would have gone into a cocoon and through metamorphosis would have came out a beautiful, flying, colorful butterfly. But many of you step on caterpillars, and you do that to people the same way. You step on these young people while they're young, before they can go into the cocoon of baptism and come out as one of God's beautiful flying butterflies. I want to remind you. I want to challenge you. I want to command you. I want to exalt you and encourage you to remember and never forget that Christ is the author and the finisher of our faith. So let it be written. So let it be done. The grass with us, the flower fadeth away, but the words of God shall stand forever. I'm so glad. I'm so happy. I'm elated to declare unto you. I hope you can say the same thing that He is the author and the finisher of our faith. Be blessed.